Welcome back. As we have uh, during his self-isolation, joining Mayor John Toria via Skype because there is a lot of developments when it comes to what's happening in the city. Good morning to you, Mayor. Good morning. Let's begin here. This is your last day in self-isolation since you returned from the UK from when you returned from your trip there. Um, though I assume you're still going to be working a lot from home and practicing what you preach. Yes, I think that's very important because, again, I'll be free to do anything I want. And I guess, you know, you could smile and say to yourself, well, there's not much to do in the city. There's nowhere to go. I, I maybe just will step outside for a walk or even go for a ride on the elevator, which I haven't done <laughs> for two weeks. But, uh, you know, after that, I will be going to the City Hall each day and spending mm -hmm. some time there and some of these briefings that I haven't been able to participate in personally. But otherwise... Uh, I would intend to work from here because I want to set the example again of saying that you can do it, uh, that you should do it uh, wherever possible. And if I am saying that to people, then how can I not be doing it myself? So that's what I'll be doing. Absolutely. I want to go right to a tweet, actually. Uh, we put this out to our viewers on what they are wondering about. And it's a, about enforcement. A lot of people are asking questions about putting measures in place to find travelers who are maybe returning home and then they go to the grocery store or those who are gathering in big crowds. This specifically coming from one of our viewers named Jesse. Uh, are there, is there more discussion when it comes to possible penalties? Well, yes. Uh, our enforcement generally, we spent quite a bit of time on our emergency uh, conference calls this morning talking about that because there's no point in having you know, these orders issued if people are going to flagrantly disregard them. And so I'd much rather, and I think everybody on the call talking this morning, which includes all the players, would rather not sort of have, you know, snitch lines and police officers going out and kind of, you know, going to individual people. But uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, people out, uh, you know, kind of seeing what's going on, especially as regards uh, the non-essential businesses. We are looking very hard at what we have to do about parks and playgrounds because I'm not sure people have the message yet that if they're going to use them, and I get it. I mean, people's kids are probably at this stage after all this time, you know, getting irritating and getting a little bit, uh, you know, a bit restless, to say the least. But we're going to have to look at that. But I think our preference is to, you know, have our police officers who are very busy with many things to do, warn people, inform people. Uh, of the orders, which they may not be aware of, although I, I don't know how they couldn't be at this stage, uh, you know, rather than going out and sort of having everybody get tickets. Uh, certainly with businesses, we're prepared to be quite tough. And uh, I know the province is going to be doing a good job, as they should, on going out and surveying construction scenes and making sure that those don't co that don't comply are ordered to shut down. Mm -hmm. Mayor, you mentioned one quick thing there when it comes to playgrounds. Uh, we've seen cities like Mississauga actually taping them up and saying no access to them. I've only seen a handful of signs here in the city of Toronto that are more so saying, we are not sanitizing the equipment, but not an outright blocking of them. Is that a possibility then in the near future that we could see that? Yes. Okay. I okay. mean, it's, you know, look, I'm saying it yes, because that's a straightforward answer to say that we're monitoring very closely whether people are getting the message that they shouldn't be congregating and letting even the kids or the adults be in close quarters in those playgrounds and parks. And if the medical officer of health and myself uh, talking about it, which we did this morning and we do almost every day, are not satisfied that people are getting the message and practicing uh, what we want them to do, then uh, more steps will have to be taken. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about um, a TTC driver uh, recently testing positive for COVID-19 and what things are being put into place. There are still a number of people taking public transit. It is an essential service. Uh, have there been more discussions with the transit system? Yes, uh, the ridership is running at about 19% of normal, uh, so that's very low. And so that means that, generally speaking, the subways and, and streetcars and buses, as most people will have observed, are not crowded. This was a subway operator who got this, which seems more unlikely, only because subway operators, as you know, are enclosed in a in a in a in a, uh, in a cab, uh, you know, in the front. So, um, you know, what we have done, of course, is to follow up by allowing. Uh, TTC uh, workers to wear masks. We have uh, eliminated uh, front door boarding so that those people aren't close to the operators. We have stopped the use of uh, tokens so that they don't have to pay at the front. So we're doing all the things I hope that are responsive to the concerns of the union and the individual workers who, let's remember, are doing a great job for us, just like the healthcare care workers, the public health workers, the grocery store workers. These are people that are on the job uh, keeping the city going, and so we want them to stay safe. So I think we're trying to be responsive to everything they want us to do and everything we should do to keep them safe, um, and that's what we'll continue to do. We've seen some positive cases in our shelter system. I know these are ongoing discussions with what can be done. Uh, do you have an update there? Yes, there are presently nine places that we have established already uh, in which we are sheltering uh, people who have either been tested and we're not sure of the results or otherwise. We're in the process now of both uh, uh, taking over on a lease basis, a hotel. I say taking over in the sense we're going to rent it uh, and use it for people who 
have been tested positive so they can be isolated and we are establishing a facility where people who are uh, you know exp have been tested positive can be because of course by uh, by uh, logic everybody who's been tested positive and has the virus can be in the same place they don't have to be isolated from each other they just need to be cared for so i think we can say that we're taking very good care of the most vulnerable people who otherwise have uh, nowhere to go so they don't end up spending time in our hospital emergency rooms which is not good or for that matter just out in the street uh, you know, uh, potentially conveying the virus to others. So I think we're very keenly focusing on this and with great work done by our public servants and by community organizations that are helping us. Uh, Mayor Troy, I don't know if you have access to a, um, a monitor there, if you can see our programming. We were showing some video a little bit earlier on a more lighter note uh, of this robot that is making the rounds online. Have you seen this video yet? No. I don't know if you can oh, see there, it here. See there it. we go. Yeah, okay, this is it. yeah. a, it, it's wandering the streets uh, in the UK with a message telling people to self-isolate, do not hoard groceries, uh, do not panic, stay calm. It's getting a lot of attention online. Do you think something like this could work in the city of Toronto? You know what? Uh, of course it could because it's novel. People pay attention to it. They smile. And, you know, heaven knows as well that we need a few things to smile about these days. And that kind of thing makes people smile because it's kind of unusual. So if there's one available, uh, somebody can let me know and we'll maybe have it patrolling the streets of Toronto in that kind of friendly, benign, informative way. But people should follow all of that uh, advice uh, from the robot or from me or from Premier Ford or from the Medical Officer of Health. Please do those things. Please stay in in, in your home. Uh, please don't associate closely with others. Uh, please don't go shopping any more often than necessary. This is how we beat this. Yes. This is how we beat this, by doing this. And uh, if the robot helps, bring it on. Uh, let's hope they listen to officials, not necessarily need the robot to do it. But uh, as always, thank you for your time. And I'm sure we'll be chatting with you in the days to come. Thank you, Mayor Tory. Thank you very much, Melanie.